The dangers of nanotechnology have been well recorded, and their hazards have been documented by irrefutable sources. Like the X-Files. Alex Kratchek could have killed Assistant Director Skinner whenever he wanted. He had the power to do that thanks to nanotechnology. That's been well documented. We also have the documentation you see here before you. You want proof of how dangerous small things are? Dustin Hoffman's five foot five! Also nanotech warriors for the PlayStation. Basically, what F Zero would be if it was a shooter, like like combine F Zero with something like I don't know, whatever shooter you're thinking of right now, and yelling at the screen violently, and also throw in some nanotechnology because you like to live dangerously, and voila, that's Nanotech Warrior, perhaps the single greatest combination of things since the Hook. Come on, Julia Roberts and Dustin Hoffman, get out of here. That's Beauty and the Beast. Nanotech Warrior was released in 1997, but it's got a story straight out of 1984. It's basically the plot of Terminator, but like if they if they shrunk John Connor down to a microscopic level. So it's basically Terminator meets Honey, I Shrunk the Kids then. You see? D do you see what I mean about great combinations? If you're not already eBaying this, I don't know what to tell you. goes like this. We create nanotechnology. It somehow creates world peace and, and solves world hunger, having these tiny robots everywhere. Oops! Up! Oh, they became self-aware and now they have to be destroyed, John Connor. So stand still, Wayne Zelensky. We gotta shrink you down and put you in a little spaceship. Whatever happened to Rick Moranis? It's like he... he's totally mic-dropped all of us. And deservingly so. He did what he came to do. And now it's your turn. You have to save the world by blowing up these tiny goddamn robots with your tiny goddamn lasers. And you'll crash about a thousand goddamn times, but that's when you have to ask yourself, did Rick Moranis quit? Did he just walk away? Actually, he did, so that's a bad example. But look, he only did that after he saved the world. So now, now save the goddamn world. There's only like eight levels, but it's so freaking hard. It doesn't even matter. Eight levels is more than enough for me. I, I didn't even see all of them anyway. I wish, I wish I was better at video games. I'd have a lot less headaches. Actually, what do I care? I still have fun anyway, and that's, that's what matters. Plus we have Advil, which, I mean, that stuff works so fast. It's one step away from nanotechnology. I want to play a game where Advil takes over the world. Brown pills just fall from the sky and pelt everyone to death. And only one man can save the world. Just he, on his fiery steed. And with Emma Watson, look, that would be my game. And am I stalling because I'm no damn good at this game? Yes, yes I am, that's very true. Look, what do you want from me? There are power-ups and things, and there are bosses at the end of the levels. I saw very few of them, which is probably for the best, because they likely would have beaten me mercilessly. Like Mark, with a game calm. Now you see why I love Advil so much. Look, this is just an awesome, awesome game with a very cool concept and a very cool style. And it runs great, and it's smooth. You know what? It actually reminds me of a Wii U title called Nano Assault Neo. Because that's another shooter where you're, you're shrunk down. You know, it's kind of the same thing. And I love that game, and I love Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, so it all makes sense. It's tough as balls, but hey, so is Dustin Hoffman. Can you imagine if he was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? The movie never would have happened, because he doesn't make mistakes. It's Nanotech Warrior! For the original PlayStation, hey, thanks to our pal Mark from Brooklyn, New York, for sending this to the show. I would certainly call this a must-have PlayStation game.